I yeah, okay. Yeah, it's switched off. Start. <laughs> All right. And I kind of feel out of place here, though. I could smell all the potent sperms that have just left the dyes. Uh, First of all, a uh, huge round of applause to everybody that has done everything. And go on. <laughs> and this is what you got after two days. I mean, I mean for engineers, right, you guys are surprisingly upbeat. I I'll tell you what, uh, two things scare me off, uh, media and technology. So in my act today, I'm going to make sure that uh, I keep this to the things that scare me off, media and technology, and I'm going to do it the lean, lean startup way. So I'm going to test my jokes on you guys. So if it works, I'll probably get a show where I'll really be paid, maybe. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, first of all, a shout out to everybody who survived Hurricane Sandy and uh, Cyclone Neelam. Really feels like an end of the world for me, though. I mean, what fucks me up totally is the media. Right? I mean, if you who comes up with these names anyway? Cyclone Neelam. I mean, you know what a better name for a cyclone is? Call it Sonia Gandhi. Comes from a different country, robs people of wealth and prosperity, and nobody can do shit about it. It's it's just so weird, right? And the way media projects this com starts comparing Cyclone Neelam with uh, Hurricane Sandy. You guys know for a fact comparing Cyclone Neelam with Hurricane Sandy is like comparing Jayalalitha with Kim Kardashian. You know what I mean? It just doesn't fit the will, right? Yeah, I was watching this thing on uh, news yesterday and these guys go about saying, oh, President Obama is really sad about Cyclone Neelam. Duh! I mean, what options has he got anyway? Yes, 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 finally Cyclone in my tenure. He didn't be doing that, right? Media totally screws up your happiness. I don't know if you guys watch cricket. There was this Ranji Trophy match yesterday and apparently well, it's actually kind of fun. Sachin scored a century. New Star Wars movie is going to be released in a while. Feels like 90s again. But <laughs> anyway, so th this, th this thing, right? Sachin Tendulkar apparently called everybody to his home and cooked food for them. And Aztec started making it as a huge news article. I don't, I don't even know if these guys have uh, a context to make a news article, right? Say Tendulkar peed. And it's like a news article. Tendulkar pees every day! And people are like, oh, he, does he pee? Yes, he pees in the V. Why is so? Because his straight drive is always in the V. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they just screw up your happiness big time. See, I don't have a problem with media or God or anything. Particularly God, right? I'm okay with the concept of God. I think God for me is like Justin Bieber, right? No fans here, right? <laughs> so I'm okay with the guy, right? It's the fan club that freaks me out big time. And people, st I, I kind of keep thinking how it'd be like if Jesus had technology back then, right? On the day of crucifixion, probably would have gotten up in the morning, did his daily thing, ate some cereal. He got a WhatsApp message, yo bro, what up? Uh, just finished cereal, what up with you? Uh, thinking about crucifying you tonight. Uh, and Jesus would have been like, uh, okay bro, what time? Uh, 5.30, good? Uh, no, 5.30 I have to meet Monica Bellucci, Mary Magdalene. Right? Sorry. You know, shit happens. <laughs> right? Uh, six o'clock good? Yeah, six o'clock good. We have been doing it on Bangalore. No, no, no. That road has got lots of traffic. Let's just take the highway. Yeah, 6.30 we're done. I, I, I just don't get the get head around it. And it's just not Jesus, Jesus. Think of Indian mythology, right? If there was technology back then, I, swear, I, I know you could not think of Mahabharat happening. It probably would have been like a bunch of guys sitting in front of computers playing Counter-Strike. I killed him, I killed him, I killed him, we won, we won, we won. 
And Draupadi cheered her and would have been like, as a stitching to Draupadi's computer, fast, 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 somebody's a stitching, dip, dip it off, rip it off, fight this man. It would have been so much fun. And a picturing technology in a sense. So I thought I'll just keep it to the technical folks. So I got a presentation for you, Talking Tech. You can download this from SlideShare, by the way. SlideShare.com slash Kaushika slash Talking Tech. And if you guys are already on your mobile phones, which I'm sure half of you are, and if you guys are wondering about a hashtag to use, hashtag sexy face, by the way. <laughs> sexy face. So uh, I think this is going to be the funniest part, me operating a Mac, but I'll just give it a shot. See, uh, engineers are scared of lots and lots of things, right? First and foremost, you know, th these are the things I think engineers are most scared of. Death, right? Obviously. I mean, nobody wants to die. As a matter of fact, none of us are going to die early. We always have the habit of missing deadlines. Rest assured, we're going to stay up. GitHub, obvious reasons. Tummy, obviously. Once you become an engineer, you become fat. In fact, we become so fat that we can convert a binary tree into linked list in a while. <laughs> and big tummy. And you become so fat that you can solve traveling salesman problem and be go off one time because you can just visit all the cities at once. Women, any women, right? Any women you're scared of, obviously you don't want to talk to, uh, you, 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 you will WhatsApp. What is there to talk, really? <laughs> pretty women, this even women are scared of, by the way. I mean, they're like, oh, that bitch is pretty. <laughs> and public speaking. I've realized that uh, the thing that scares the crap out of engineers the most is public speaking. It's like Seinfeld saying it, right? The guy who is giving eulogy on somebody's uh, funeral would rather be in the box. <laughs> so I put on some tips for you guys, you know, just to, you know, to avoid, how, how do you curb the fear of public speaking? A couple of things you could do, right? Uh, don't be too wordy in your slides. You need to make sure that you get the audience interested in your slides and having too many words in your presentation is a strict no-no. Although having everything on your presentation means that you don't have to remember anything you say, but some of us having too many words also gives them courage. It's, where it's all very nice to say, but oftentimes these words don't make any sense, and you end up losing your audience because they'll be reading your slide thinking there's something in it, and you're going to disappoint them big time if they discard at the end of the slide that there's anything in they haven't still, you can be rest assured that they are deservedly in Hall of Shame. You don't want to be doing that, right? And next thing, no inappropriate figures at all. Inappropriate figures hurt big time. <laughs> if you're going to talk of something, talk of something. You know, for example, this makes sense, right? Chick magnet. You can actually see a couple of chicks actually shy, you know. And no inappropriate references. All of us have this habit of, you know, referring to some book, some author, some shit, to say, oh, you know, what we made a point. Don't do that, right? Using multiple colors and inappropriate references in your presentation shows awesomeness. Jesus H. Christ. <laughs> H is his middle name, by the way. It's called Jesu. <laughs> I'm just making that up, I don't know. <laughs> right? Uh, but you know, Jesus can't be right always, right? So this is what other people think of it. Jesus is just bluffing. It's awful doing colors, Monica Bellucci. Take it from the learned. Uh, presentations are so much sexier in slow motion. You should follow this tip. They're not making any sense, one man's general transition, the other man's changed individually. So this is by our Prime Minister, so keep up to it, and not too many bullets. This is like the most important thing. All of us keep putting bullet points, bullet points, bullet points, bullet points, one after one. Using too many bullet points will only mean that you or a door can have no clue about what you're talking. Limit the bullet to max of six, even a real gun can contain only six bullets at a time. Why is this happening at the end? <laughs> Thanks for that. And this is the other thing, typographical letters. Make sure you spell everything correctly, right? Uh, I think I'll conclude the PPT here. We could go on to next stack. Uh, this is crude. This is crude. Any questions? We good. <laughs> right. So if I offended somebody, I'm really sorry. Actually, I couldn't even figure where my personal decency is. As a matter of fact, I cross mine time to time. That's all you know, you have one in the first place. So, uh, 
engineers, right? Any Harry Potter fans in the crowd tonight? <coughs> You're alone, boss. <laughs> <coughs> so if I, uh, would I be booed at if I said I hated Harry Potter? Yeah, I hated Harry Potter. So do, do you guys follow J.K. Rowling, the writer, writer? Her new book is coming up, apparently it's for adults. Have you seen this? I, know, I was thinking about it, right? Finally, all these guys in Harry Potter who never got to use their wands can use it at once. Kudos to J.K. Rowling. I think this is one of the most awesomest things. It, all these Neville Longbottoms and all these bullshit characters who never even got to hold on the wand can now use, do something with the wand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't make up stereotypes. I just see them. <laughs> ah, so you guys watch documentaries, right? I mean, you're engineers. I'm sure you guys watch lots of documentaries. You do, right? It's all you do. <laughs> I know. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, I've been watching uh, the CNN and uh, NDTV off late where they're showing this one hour shows, right? The documentaries that are borrowed from, you know, play where in various places and then put up. You know, on one person or a subject, do you guys realize that there are millions of documentaries made? Millions. Hitler, right? For example, I've seen about 40, 50 documentaries on Hitler alone. I mean, it's not like it's a lost straw or something, right? Let me watch this one documentary, then I'll frame my opinion on him. I don't even know what these guys are thinking about. There's always this background score guy, background voice guy in the documentary who talks about it. Uh, uh, Hitler was a very bad person. Duh. Uh, he even killed his own dog. I couldn't help but wonder, five million Jews, all right, bro, anybody will make that mistake. He killed his own dog. What a jackass. Right? I, I, I don't even get the idea of a documentary. You see the same shit time and again. It's like watching Ekta Kapoor's Kyunki Sasbi Kabi Bahuti or something. You always know what is coming, right? And you always know there's this guy who's going to get married four times and they're going to show up the same thing and the kids will grow old but they'll still have the black hair, big body, big build. And I, I think the whole idea of making a documentary, I, I actually want to give you a demo of how these guys do a documentary, right? So. Canon 40, 50 camera or something. So there's this guy standing. Uh, we'll talk about Hitler today. Play the slides, play the slides, play the slides. And these slides will be about Hitler moving around the Jews and stuff. That's Hitler moving from here to there. Hitler is a good mover. You can see that in the documentary. You're like, <laughs> and these guys don't even get sarcasm. Actually, my friends ask me to. No, uh, why, why are you so sarcastic? You know, the point is, I'm not sarcastic. you just douchebags if you don't get sarcasm. There's a friend of mine who used to come to me and uh, ask me, uh, dude, how do I look today? Like, awesome, man. Man, thank you. I said, duh, I was just being sarcastic. He goes, why would you say something that's not true? Uh, well, because that was not true. That's why I say it. And now when I'm even serious, I'm like, dude, you want a butterscotch ice cream? Yeah, yeah, fuck off, jackass. It doesn't sit well with people of late, right? Uh, and I, I kind of hel can't help but wonder how you know, the, the entire process of sarcasm is misrepresented in the community. You're not supposed to do, do jokes on women, obviously, and you're not supposed to do jokes on politicians. Well, that you can, maybe. We all do that on Twitter, right? <laughs> and you're not supposed to do jokes on your manager. I can't. They're sitting here, right? <laughs> I work in a startup. That's funny, though. I work in a startup by name Ideophone Labs. Uh, we make commuter apps. If any VC is sitting here, uh, in a nutshell, Ideophone Labs makes apps for commuters. Uh, we also do lots of cool stuff for information. You can connect on at gmail.com. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, you might as well use the opportunity. Somebody said Flipkart was hiring, right? I mean, we, we are okay to be incubated or uh, given funds for, you know, whatever makes you guys happy, really. And I, I, tell, this, I tell this to my parents, right? Uh, my relatives and stuff. I, where do you work? Uh, I do phone labs. So what do you guys do? Make SIM cards? Yeah, more or less. Make SIM cards and sell them. And uh, my, my uncle goes to another whole another level of asking me, right? So do you guys make real apps? I'm like, what are real apps? You know how this uncle freak you out, the 70 year olds? How you always ask these guys, uh, uncle, what are these guys doing? The married men and women when you were very young, you wanted to ask about what these guys were doing when they go inside the room. You ask your uncle or aunt, whoever it is, oh, what are these guys doing inside the room? And they go, uh, you'll know when you age. And technology, I think, is the greatest leveler. Now you can just take the phone, turn it to Japanese and say, enjoy your phone. You have your revenge there. 
it, it, it kind of, it's kind of funny though. It makes everything look stupid and makes us more stressful also. You can't even fake anything. Remember 1990s? You don't remember 1990s? I mean, none of you look so young anyway. <laughs> right? I mean, remember 1990s where there was no Google, no Facebook, no Twitter, obviously, where you can just win an argument with a lie. All you had to do was, I swear to God, studies promise, I swear to God. The days are gone. And today is like, keep talking, bro, keep talking. You know, you're in Google here, keep talking. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, sure, totally, completely. You can't even fake anything today. But, and it's, you know, I have immense respect for engineers, right? Uh, the, the fact that you have to put up with the idea of people thinking that the only thing you do in front of your computer is watch porn, but still be happy about being an engineer, that's awesome. You guys watch porn? <laughs> I mean, come on. You know that UPorn, for a fact, is the largest earning thing. Uh, I mean, UPorn gets more revenues than IPL plus NBA plus NFL. <laughs> you guys know that, right? I mean, what does that tell you? You and I are not the only ones watching it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> You know, now if I could give an advice to a 17-year-old myself to a space-time continuum, I'd probably tell him, Yo, if you have Google.com open every time somebody walks into your room, they know what you're watching. <laughs> well, we all of us did that, right? A folder named Virus, right? Some of us even installed Linux because your parents wouldn't touch it. <laughs> we did that, you know, let's not be ashamed of the fact, I mean, we did that. Your dad would be like, oh, this, 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 I'm not supposed to touch, maybe. In fact, my dad was never happy with whatever I was doing anyway. The whole idea of startup didn't sit well with me, with him, with me, yeah, with him, right? And the idea of me doing stand-up comedy is like, you make people laugh, why do you even have to do anything about it? You just go and stand there, like, totally. Right, you know, I'm from Hyderabad. Don't have any bombs, but I can prove it to you if you need it. I'm from Hyderabad, right? South Indian parents get really aggressive when they're naming their kids. My complete name is Aravalli Srinivas Ramachandra Kaushik. And when my dad gets frustrated, he uses my complete name with a Mr. and before. Mr. Aravalli Srinivas. Hey, what's that again? Ramachandra, right? Mr. Aravalli Srinivas Ramachandra Kaushik. I'm like, okay, something is screwed up here. And he starts asking you all this rhetorical bullshit that you don't know if you have to answer to it or not. He goes about saying, do you know what you've done? And you're thinking, so do I tell him if I know what I've done? Okay, let's wait for a while. Do you know how much it costed me? Uh, five grand. Shut up. I'm like, oh, sorry. Do you know what that guy, what is that guy's name? Bali, what is that guy's name? Rajiv, right? Do you know how Rajiv is? Uh, uh, he's Pradeep. Shut up. Uh, you know, he does all this. Uh, he has his best one-liners, right? Uh, he grew up in a nerd colony. So I can kind picture what your state of mind anyway, right? I grew up in a nerd colony and everybody won every damn thing. I was the last guy to win anything there, right? Uh, these guys have lots of certificates, right? Obviously, everybody's like, mm, I want this, I want that. And the only thing I ever had was a birth certificate. <laughs> that too not because I was good at it. <laughs> yeah, all of us go through that. So I, I've kind of figured out, right? I was, I was thinking I'll pay my little tribute to the hero I look up to, Don McMillan. So I put forward, uh, I put together an act for you guys. How do you tell one person from another by asking one simple question? What is it? One simple question you could ask to anybody and be rest assured to know what their profession is, right? The question is, what is pi? You ask this question and you can, by the answer you get, uh, you can almost always tell what the guy's profession is. You ask a mathematician that, what is pi? He'll probably tell you, oh, it's ratio of the circumference circle to its diameter, because they hate to be pinned down to numbers. You ask them what is two pleasure, they go, it should be two times two, but I'm not sure it's four yet, but tomorrow it could be four. That if they have a fucked up accent, by the way. And you ask a, a scientist this, a, a physicist, he'd go, uh, pi 3.141516, if it's really committed, it'll go on forever. Right? And you ask an engineer that, he would probably go, uh, pi, pi is 3.2, but you know, I'll write it as 3.4. You know what, just round it off to 4. I, why didn't you just Google that shit anyway? <laughs> right? And, and you ask a CEO that. We don't have anybody here, right? We do. 
We ask you, see, boy, 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 it's delicious. I just had one ice cream yesterday. <laughs> and you ask a manager that. He goes, uh, when do you need this by? Tomorrow evening? I need three people to work on this shit. <laughs> totally. And you ask a salesperson the same question. He'll tell you, uh, engineers will tell you it's 3.2, but I'll give you for 2.6. Two point two is the lost call. I walk off the door and the deal's off. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. You guys have been awesome.